today's a topic of discussion is how to write a program on Fibonacci series in C++. So before writing a program on Fibonacci series in C++, let's first understand what is Fibonacci series. So what is Fibonacci series? Fibonacci series is a series that starts with 0 and 1. These are the first two terms of the Fibonacci series and each term is a sum of the previous two terms. So let's understand this through an example. So we are having two terms that is 0 and 1. The next term would be equal to the sum of these two terms that is 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. The next term would be the sum of these two terms that is 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. The next term would be equal to the sum of these two terms that is 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. The next term would be the sum of these two terms that is 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 and so on. We'll, till, this process will continue till the n terms. All right. Now, there are two approaches that we can use to create a Fibonacci series in C++. The first approach is iterative approach and the second one is a recursive approach. Now first we will look at what is an iterative approach. Now see what is an iterative approach. An iterative approach is an approach that uses the looping statements like for loop, while loop, do while loop. These are the looping statements that execute the same statements till the loop condition is satisfied. So let's understand this for an example. Suppose I want to print hello on the console five times and I'm not using any loop. Then I have to write five times C out statement to print hello five times. And suppose I want to write hello thousand times. So I have to write C out statement thousand times. So this would be a really a very tedious task. So to avoid this tedious task, I have to use for loop or any other loop to print such big numbers. So I'm using here for loop. So here I have mentioned the condition that is i less than equal to 5. So this loop will run 5 times and will print hello 5 times. So this is an iterative approach. So here I have given the condition that this loop will run 5 times. So we'll be using this approach to create the Fibonacci series in C++. So let's look using the C++ compiler to create a Fibonacci series in C++. So let's first include the header file. Now what is a header file in C++? That is IO stream. Okay. Now after including the header file, we have to use the namespace std. This is a predefined namespace in C++. Now I have to define the main function. Okay, now inside the main function, I will be having the logic of the Fibonacci series. Okay, now first we will create the variables. First is equal to 0, that is the first term. The second is equal to 1, this is the second term. Okay, now we have to find the next term on each iteration. We will be evaluating the next term. Now I am creating another variable, that is n. Okay, now... Now we will take the user input for how many terms the user want to create the Fibonacci series. So enter the number of terms. Alright, now we will use cin to take the user input and the value gets stored in n variable. That the first and the second terms. So we will print first these two terms. Okay. First, then we'll be adding a space between the two terms. That is second. Okay. Now, after printing the first two terms, all right, we will be defining the for loop, which will find rest of the terms. So here we create the loop counter i equal to zero and i less than n minus two i plus plus. So here we are using n minus 2 because we have already printed the first two terms. So this loop will run n minus 2 time. For example, I have entered n equal to 5. So I have to, I want to create the 5 term series. So here we have already printed first two terms. So 5 minus 2. It means that the loop will run 3 times to print just 3 terms. Okay, now I am writing the logic of the for loop. The next term is equal to the first 
plus second. These are the previous term. These are the previous two terms of the next term. Okay, now I will print the next term. After printing the next term, first becomes the second and second becomes the next. Okay. Now, this logic is quite confusing. So, to understand it more clearly, we will drive on this code. Okay. Now, suppose I enter the uh, n equal to 5. The value which is given to n is 5. Suppose I want to create the Fibonacci series of 5 terms. Alright. So, we are having first 2 terms. I have to create rest of the 3 terms. So, in the first iteration, the value of the i is equal to 0. Alright. Now, here n is equal to 5. It means 5 minus 2. i less than 3 means the loop will run 3 times. Okay. So, 0 is less than 3. This condition is true. So, it will go inside the for loop. And the next is equal to first plus second. 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. And the value of first becomes the second. And the value of first becomes second. That is equal to 1. And the value of the second becomes the next. That is 1. Because the value of the next is 1. So, we got the third term. That is 1. This is the next term. Now, in the next iteration, the value of i gets incremented by 1 and the value of i becomes 1. So, 1 is less than 3. This condition is true. So, next is equal to first plus second. And the value of first is 1 and the value of the second is 1. The 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So, we got the next term also that is 2. So, we got our fourth term that is 2. Okay. Now, first becomes the second and the value of the second is 1. So, here we put 1. Okay. And the value of the second becomes the next. And the value of this next is 2. So, the value of the second becomes 2. Okay. Now, after running this iteration, the, I, the value of the i gets incremented and becomes 2. 2 is less than two, uh, 3. Yes. The condition is true. So, therefore, the clue will come inside the for loop. Now, the value of the next is equal to first plus second. That is 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So, there we got the fifth term also. That is 3. Okay. And the first becomes second. That is the value of the first is equal to 2. And the value of the second is equal to next. That is 3. Okay. Now, after running this iteration, the value of i gets incremented and becomes 3. 3 less than 3. This condition is false. So, the control will come out of the for loop and we got the Fibonacci series that is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. Alright. Now, we have to add one more statement which is left that is the return statement. Now, we will run this code. Enter the number of terms. Suppose I enter the 7 number. So, we got the series of 7 terms. So, this is an output. So, we have created a Fibonacci series using this iterative approach. So now, we will see how to create a Fibonacci series using recursive approach. So, let's see now, what is a recursive approach. It is an approach in which function calls itself till the base condition is satisfied. It means that function is calling itself again and again till the base condition is satisfied. So, let's understand this through an example. Here, I have want to print hello. Okay, so I want, suppose I want to print hello five times. So, I, I want to implement this code through a recursive approach. So, here the value of n is equal to 5. Okay, 5 is greater than 0? Yes. So, it will print hello. Now, it will, the control will come to the next statement that is prints. Now, here the, it is calling the print function again. And the, param the parameters of print function is n minus 1. That is, it becomes 4. Okay. Now the control will come to this function and the value of n becomes 4. It will again check the condition. So here function is calling itself again and again till this condition is satisfied. When the con this condition is not satisfied, the control will come out of the function. 
So this is an recursive approach. We will be using this approach to implement the Fibonacci series in C++. So let's see. Now we will be using or we will be creating a Fibonacci series using a recursive approach. So first we create a int uh, n variable. All right. Now we will ask the user to give the input for how many terms that the user want to create the Fibonacci series. All right. So enter the number of terms. C in the value gets stored in the n variable as we have already know the first two term that is 0 and 1 so we first print those two terms that is 0 now we'll add the space we'll print the second term that is 1 okay now after printing the first two terms we'll call the function Fibonacci because this is a recursive approach. Alright, so we are using a user defined function that is Fibonacci. Alright, we'll pass here n minus 2. Why we are passing here n minus 2? Because we have already printed the first two terms. So here we are passing the n minus 2. Now we haven't defined the Fibonacci function yet. So we'll now define the Fibonacci function over here. The return type of the Fibonacci function is void because it is not returning any value. Now, here int is equal to n. The value of n minus 2 will get stored in n variable. Okay, now we will create the static variables over here. That is first term equal to 0. Second is equal to 1. And the next term which we will be calculating. on. Okay, why we have used static variables? Static variables are those variables that are allocated once and the value of the static variables will be carried in the next function calls. For example, like, like I'm calling the Fibonacci function again. So the function is calling itself and the, the static variables those that retain its value. Static variables are those that retains its value. It does not reinitialize. Means if I'm calling this function again, then the first variable, second variable will not initialize by 0 and 1 respectively. It will retain its value. Okay, now I'm adding the if condition n is greater than 0. This is a condition. Now, the next term is equal to first plus plus the second. The logic would remain same that we have done in the iterative approach. Okay, now we'll print the next term. Now, first becomes the second. Okay, and second becomes the next. In the add function of Fibonacci, we'll call itself. And here we'll pass the n minus 1 as a parameter. Why we are passing n minus 1? Because on each recursive call, we are getting one term. So, it, the term getting reduced by 1 on each recursive call. Now, we will run this code. Now, enter the number of terms. Suppose I want to create the Fibonacci series of 6 terms. So, we got the output that is Fibonacci series of 6 terms. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe.